Hello, everybody. Good evening from Singapore. Good afternoon from sunny Barcelona. We have an amazing day ahead of us. Today is day number two of our campaign with the Catalan Tourist Support, Catalonia, the secrets beyond Barcelona, where we are exploring everything that Catalonia has to offer to solo female travelers. And today we have an even more special day than yesterday. Today we are in Barcelona and we are going to visit five UNESCO World Heritage listed sites in the city, including the most famous parts of Barcelona, which are Sagrada Familia, Casa Vallo, La Padrera, Casa Vicens, and Hospital de San Pau. And we are going to explore the city by the hand of five, six or seven um, different women who work in tourism or who are guides in Barcelona. If you watched us yesterday, you saw that we combined a little bit of a presentation and some like insights and tips, and then we went to Parkway. So today it's all about virtual tours of Barcelona. So if you've ever been to Barcelona, you've been to some of these places, I think you're going to recognize them. And if you have, I would love to hear from you. I would love to say hi. Tell me where you are, where you're tuning in today. I know that we have people from all over the world. And so I'd love to hear where you are. I am in Singapore and I am now going to go live just in a minute with Arianna, who is in Hospital de San Pau. So without further ado, today is day number two of our campaign, Catalonia, the Secrets Beyond Barcelona, which is going on for the whole week, every day at the same time, which is now for about 60 to 90 minutes, we are exploring these different parts of Catalonia. As I was just telling you, today we are in Barcelona. If you're joining me now, say hi and tell me where you are, because I'd love to hear it. And otherwise I feel a little bit lonely here. And today is day number two of the campaign. So it's all about Gaudi's Barcelona and a little bit more than just Gaudi. We are also going to explore Hospital de San Pau, which is a modernist building, not by Gaudi, but one of his contemporaries. And Ariana will tell you all about it. So tomorrow we'll go to Tarragona, the Pyrenees, Costa, da, Costa Daurada, and, and, and you know, Terras de Lebra. And then on Thursday, it'll be all about food and wine. And on Friday, we'll go to Girona and Costa Brava. So today with me, I have Ariana, who I'm, I'm now going to bring on the screen. Hi, Ariana. Hello. Hi. And Ariana is in beautiful Hospital de San Pau, which is a modernist building. And she's going to show you around Hospital de San Pau right now. This picture that you can see on the screen, that's exactly where she is. And she is just in this patio. And behind her are all these buildings, which you're going to explore right now. And Hospital de San Pau is closed to the public now. It closed half an hour ago. And we are super lucky to be able to visit it right now without any tourists or anybody. And before um, Ariana shows you in real life what Hospital de San Pau is all about, I have a very short video to show you um about the hospital so let me just find it i have it here so i'll play the video first and then we'll go back to ariana Well, if one ever had to be sick somewhere, can you imagine being sick in Hospital de San Pau? And if I'm not mistaken, Ariana, Hospital de San Pau was in use until very, very recently. I actually had a friend my age who studied medicine to become a doctor in Hospital de San Pau. So it was in use for people until not so long ago, what, 10 years or something like that? Yeah, something like that. In 2009, they finished the new area of the hospital and basically they moved to the new area and here where i am now became a monumental area huh? an heritage site awesome so i'm going to put you on the main screen so people can see you better awesome and ariana tell me a little bit more about yourself and hospital de san pau okay uh, yeah well uh as mar said my name is ariadna and i'm a licensed tour guide in catalonia uh, being a licensed tour guide means, well, this is my full-time job to show these beautiful 
place where uh, I am from, Catalonia, Barcelona, and, and all the culture about. And also with my license, which is um, given and approved by the Catalan government, I'm allowed to guide customers inside monuments, museums, and heritage sites like this one today. Awesome. By the way, so I can't way, wait for you. Tell me. Yeah, I just want to say something else. <laughs> I am also, Go ahead. I am also a solo traveler. Um, I have been traveling solo in many places of the world, so I, I know perfectly how uh, does it feel. <laughs> awesome. So then we have the perfect guide to take us on a tour of Hospital de San Pau, another solo female traveler. So, you know, you guys say hi to Arianna and tell us where you are while she gives us a nice walking tour of Hospital de San Pau completely empty. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the camera mode to show you a little bit around. Uh, okay. And then we can see exactly what is in front of you. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. So as you could see on the video Mark uh, just showed us, uh, well, this is a huge hospital. It was built, the construction started in uh, 1902, 1902. Um, the patron of the hospital, the, the man who had the idea of building a new hospital for Barcelona, his name was Pau Gil. That's why the hospital is called Hospital de San Pau, because of the patron. Pau is Paul in English. Um, he basically he was a Catalan man. He was a banker living in Paris, and he wanted to give the half of his fortune to build a new hospital in Barcelona because basically the main hospital of Barcelona until that time, which was Hospital de la Santa Creu in Raval neighborhood in the old town of Barcelona, was already, uh, well, quite old, uh, had like uh, five uh, centuries uh, behind. It was the most important hospital in Barcelona and that's why they decided to have a new and big uh, hospital. The architect, uh, this is not Gaudí, but it was a contemporary of Gaudí, is Luis Domènech y Montané. Uh, he's considered like the father of modernismo here in, in Barcelona and in Catalonia. He had a chance to travel all over Europe, visit uh, different places, different hospitals as well. And he, um, he was inspired by a new artistic wave that was taking place in Europe by that time, which was the Modernisme. Modernisme, we call it Art Nouveau in French, Art and Craft in English, um, or Secession in Austria, Jugendstil in Germany. All those places had the same artistic wave, and basically the artists were inspired on nature, trying to represent the nature everywhere. And also designing new buildings in the middle of the nature, taking the real nature as part of it. So the uh, idea of the hospital took place also to design a new kind of hospital with a lot of nature. As you can see here in this garden, we're having trees, different kinds of trees, smelly flowers, a lot of sun, daylight. So it was a perfect place to be recovered. Huh? Actually, the idea, it was to take the people to a, nice, uh, to a nice place with a lot of natural light and being in touch with real nature to be uh, easily recovered. Let me take I you think it's, it's the best place to be sick, right? I mean, yes, it's it just is. so nice, right? It's so beautiful. It's so bright. It's so green. You can hear, I can hear the birds behind you, right? And yeah. can you imagine like being sick here in, in a hospital? I mean, hospitals tend to be very like not nice places, but this one is definitely a beautiful one. It is, it is a beautiful one. Now, now, as you can see, this is a museum. So if you come to Barcelona, you 
definitely have to put Hospital de San Pablo on your list. And well, now it's empty, as Mark told you, is all of us. But see, this is the idea of how, you know, the hospital was at the beginning of the 20th century, hmm? having uh, doors, uh, windows, sorry, right next to each bed to have as much natural light as possible. And also look at the, all the ceramics on the walls. Huh? Wow. Uh, to be easy to be clean and also look at all the flowers, right? All the decoration, huh? the Catalan flag here as well as a, as a symbol of uh, identity and Catalanism, hmm? right? It's I'm beautiful, right? I mean, I can't believe is, that it was a hospital in use for more than 100, well, for about 100 years, more than 100 yeah, years, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, um, Hospital de San Pau has been a very important and well-known hospital uh, in Spain. Uh, because, well, even at the beginning of the 20th century, they were starting to have uh, the science uh, medicine as well. And I, now I'm taking you to the operation room because it's also a beautiful place to see. This is the place where the first heart transplantation was taking place in Spain. The first heart transplantation was taking place in Hospital de San Pau. And look, look at the operation room so bright with a lot of natural light so imagine huh wow so i mean i i think this must be the only hospital in the world that is so beautiful and that you can visit as, a, as an attraction it must be also the only hospital that is a unesco site exactly it has been recognized by the unesco as a world heritage since 1997 Together with yeah. um, uh, Palau de la Música is also by Domènech i Montané, isn't it? Yes, Palau de la Música Catalana is another uh, great work of Domènech i Montané. Uh, and as well, for example, close by Casa Batlló, I know you're going to visit it later, we are having Casa Lló Morera, also uh, designed by uh, Domènech i Montané. I have to tell you, by the way, Domènech i Montané was professor of Antoni Gaudí in uh, the University of Barcelona when, when Gaudí was studying architecture. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, obviously Gaudí was very influenced by uh, Luis Domènech i Montané. Uh, the Modernisme became also the, the art of the, the higher social classes, the bourgeoisie, uh, the Catalan bourgeoisie. And for example, not in this case, because San Paulo Hospital was actually a hospital for poor people. It was a charity hospital. But for example, the houses um, and any modernist, modernist design, you are going to see like, now we are going there. All the materials they were using, fine materials like ceramics, stained glasses, marble, always on bright colors being inspired on nature, trying to represent nature everywhere. And uh, yeah, the stained glasses to, to allow the real rays of light to go through the stained glasses and reflect the different colors and different sights, etc. Okay, wow. this, is, this is the administration pavilion. Now I'll take you there. Before taking Can you there. imagine working there? Like, oh, you know, I just work yeah. in like, uh, you know, yeah. in Hospital de San Paolo. <laughs> yeah. Did you know each one of those pavilions are separate pavilions and we're designed each one for different like unities of um, illnesses, right? Let you know the whole hospital, the, all the different um, pavilions are connected to each other from the underground. We are having yes. tunnels on the underground. I haven't uh, taken you on the underground because like, I'm not sure about the connection there, but also i uh, let you know the emergency room was actually the first emergency room in a hospital in Barcelona is also uh, underneath. Yeah, the corridors are amazing. When I visited the Hospital de San Pau January last year, I was impressed by the underground corridors. Obviously, all these pavilions, how many pavilions are there in total, Ariana? 27. 
27. And they are all connected underground with these like corridors that go through all the pavilions. Yes. So that you could take the, basically you could take the people who are sick in their beds, in their hospital their beds underground and you know, on these corridors. So it's not like you go from one pavilion to the other. Like, like you were saying, these are illness related pavilions, right? So you're in one pavilion and then you need to go like in any hospital, right? You need to uh -huh. go to somewhere else to get something else. So you don't cross the patio, right? The patio is for people. So you go underground and you go into these corridors to the go to go to the other pavilion. I was I was mesmerized because the pavilions also are beautiful. Yes, they are beautiful. They are beautiful. Okay, so this is look at the all the fine arts that have been used here. For example, we are having the marble stone. Huh? Look at all the flowers, all the vegetation decoration that we can see, all the little mosaics. Huh? There is a lot of symbology here. For example, let me show you. We have two dates, which are 1905. This is with uh, an alpha. This is the date when this pavilion, uh, they started the construction of this pavilion. And this one is the date when they finished this pavilion. Huh? And again, for example, here we can see the family name of the patron, Pau Gil, huh? Pau Gil. Look at all the decoration. Look at how much light we are having here. Huh? And also, I, I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, from here. Can you see there? Yes, you can see Sagrada <laughs> Familia. <laughs> exactly, exactly. On between these two um, heritage sites, we are having uh, Avinguda um, uh, Gaudí, which is a boulevard about, I would say, a uh, kilometer long, and is connecting these two magnificent buildings. Huh? Let me show you. This is a little homage to the ancient uh, Gothic hospital located in the old town. But also, look, look at that. Yeah, look it's just that. stunning, right? I mean, like, I don't know, uh, for all of those who are watching us live, have you been to Hospital de San Pau? And if you haven't, will you go when you go next to Barcelona? Because I think that hopefully this is one of the places that we are showing you that is not a well-known landmark and that you can probably visit next time you go. Because, Ariana, when did the Hospital de San Pau open to the public as a monument? Uh, yeah, around 2010, something like that, yeah. Right, not yeah. so long and, ago, so, you know. No, and, and I have been talking to the staff here uh, before I was connected, and actually they told me still being not that well known. So it's yeah. like, I would say, like a kind of hidden gym. So yes. even, even well, I'm talking about uh, pre-COVID uh, time, even when you came on, on hike season, it was never really busy. So you could come... And, and walk, you know, nicely everywhere. That this is what I was saying about, you know, all the stained glasses on different colors, uh, the it's beautiful. Catalan, the Catalan flag, and also the cross, huh? uh, as homage to the old hospital, hmm? the old Santa Creu hospital. Uh, this is this is the entrance. And there, we are so we are, lucky to see it completely empty. Eh? We have a hospital yeah. now entirely for ourselves. Yeah, and this is Mr. Pau Gil. Huh? Obviously, he deserves to be right on the entrance. Uh, right on the entrance. Look at that. Huh? Again, so many across. people are so mesmerized uh, for all of those of you. I can see all of your comments. You're all watching us live. Yes. I hope that we are, that now Ariana is showing you a place that you're going to add to your bucket list when you go to Barcelona. This is definitely a hidden gem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally, totally. See, even also... though Barcelona is a really popular tourist destination, there's still a lot of places to be discovered. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to go back to the main entrance uh, to this this hall amazing it's it's beautiful um how all the ceilings is just so decorated right it's just so beautiful mm -hmm. yeah exactly super beautiful and 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 as we said it's not that known so it's definitely a place to be known to be known great okay Wow, I'm Ariana, gonna, you're giving us I'm, a very nice tour. I feel like yeah. really exclusive here. 
Yeah. I'm going to turn on the, the camera again, just in case you want Perfect. me. And if anybody has any questions for Ariana, this is your chance to ask them. Obviously, she can always answer them later on. Um, I think you are in the group as well. You can, you know, people can always ask, ask questions. And if you're watching the replay, also feel free to ask questions and we can always get back to you. And um, it's like so nice that we have our own private guide and our own private Hospital de San Pau. <laughs> <laughs> you are so lucky, definitely, definitely. Is it the first time that you do a private tour? Like, is it the first time that you visit Hospital de San Pau without anyone? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> this is my first time in, yeah, in, in a place so empty. Yeah, yeah. Wow, we have so many comments. I'm going to put some of them in the screen. Uh, Jean says, um, you know, majestic. I am, you know, yeah, definitely. This is a, this is a hospital. I mean, you know, um, Kara says that she needs that stained glass in her life. Yes, I think <laughs> it's one of the nicest ways to decorate, uh, um, to decorate your house. And uh, Fatma says, why are, why is it empty? Because they opened just for us. The hospital closed half, well, about an hour ago. So they stayed open just for us to have a private tour. Yeah, exactly. This is, uh, we have been collecting at 3 p.m. Barcelona time and they closed for visitors at 2.30 p.m. So that's why. Yeah. And uh, Eunice says that it looks like a palace. Yes, definitely looks like a palace. <laughs> yes, more interest. I think we have definitely achieved our objective of like, you know, getting people excited to go and visit a hospital. I think this is about the nicest hospital that you can ever find anywhere around the world. And also, well, this we is have... the biggest. This is the biggest modernist site in the world. So this oh. is the biggest modernist place you will find in the world. So it's definitely worth it. Yes, absolutely. A masterpiece. Um, I think that was Terry. Yes, definitely. Uh, you guys, I hope that you are all enjoying uh, Hospital de San Pau. And thank you so much, uh, Ariana, for giving us this tour. I know that we are going to see you very soon in Sagrada Familia. So yes. do stay tuned because Ariana will continue with us in 20 minutes or so in Sagrada Familia, where she will give yes. us a tour of also the monument. Although in that case, we can't go inside because it is close, close. Um, but we will visit. And now we are going to go to La Pedrera. So see you soon, Ariana. Thank you so much. You're welcome. See you soon. Awesome. So you're back to me. And now I am going to take you to another very beautiful, very stunning, very famous uh, part of Barcelona, another UNESCO site. We are going to go to La Pedrera with um, the two staff members and a guide from La Padrera who I'm just going to introduce to you just now. Um, again, a reminder that this week we are going through Catalonia, every day a different place, every day a different topic. Today it's all about Barcelona and we are visiting five UNESCO sites, including uh, Hospital de San Pau, which we have just visited exclusively with Ariana. Now we're going to go to La Pedrera, which is this building that you can see on the screen right now. And we'll have a private tour. We'll go to the rooftop and we will see a couple of very beautiful parts of this building that was also designed by Gaudí, also a UNESCO site. And then after that, we are going to go back with Ariana to Sagrada Familia and we're going to have a tour of Sagrada Familia, the most famous place in Barcelona, the most visited, the most reviewed place on TripAdvisor a couple of years ago as well. So definitely a very famous place. And then we will continue with Casa Vicente, which is another hidden gem that I am pretty sure you also have not heard about, like you probably didn't hear about Hospital de San Pau. So that'll be another hidden gem that we are bringing to you. And then we will finish the day with something really, really special. We're going to have a preview of the very first 10D experience in the world at Casa Vallo which is only unveiling to the public on the 14th of May. So we have privileged access more than a week ahead of time. And we're going to explore the building with uh, Anahi, which is part of the marketing team. So without further ado, I am going to bring Monica and her colleague. Hello. Monica, can you hear me? Hello. Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, do you hear I, us? Okay. Hello. Yes, now I can see you. Awesome. Let me put you on Do the you main screen me? instead of myself. I can hear you. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, brilliant. How are you? So good afternoon from Barcelona. Uh, the sun is shining. It's 3 p.m. And we're in front of one of the masterpieces of Antoni Gaudí here in Barcelona. An incredible building that was built between 1906 and 1912 in the heart of the city, in the heart of Barcelona. We're in the neighborhood of La Champla, 
uh, the neighborhood where a hundred years ago moved the wealthiest families of the city. Um, those rich families wanted to show their economical power, and that's why they commissioned architects like Antoni Gaudi to build those beautiful houses in the modernist style. Um, today we'll discover this masterpiece uh, of Antoni Gaudi. Uh, you have to know that this house has uh, two names. Mr. and Mrs. Mila uh, commissioned uh, the house in uh, 1906 to Antoni Gaudi. That's why the original name of this house is uh, Casa Mila. Casa means house in Catalan language. So the original name of this building is Casa Mila. But as you can see, Antoni Gaudi designed a surprising, astonishing house made of stone. Uh, every single person would be surprised at the beginning of the 20th century. And that's why uh, people would talk about La Pedrera, the quarry, the second name of this building. People would not understand what was doing this huge block of stone in the middle of uh, one of the most elegant avenues of Barcelona. Uh, just by having a look, you will see that uh, this house has a completely different shape from any other building uh, that we could see here in this, in this area. It is a building inspired by nature. We can see the undulating shapes of the facade that make us remember of the waves of the sea. We can see those incredible uh, balconies uh, made of wrought iron. Uh, if we observe them, we can see uh, seaweeds. And have a look at the main entrance doors. They look like the wings of a butterfly. Today, we will discover uh, the most important places of this house. Uh, we will make a quick tour to discover the courtyard, uh, the attic, and a uh, unique rooftop here in Barcelona and probably in the world. Shall we get inside, Mar? Yes, let's go. Let's I'm go. so excited. <laughs> I am going to play one of let's the videos go. just now as you're getting Good. inside. Okay. Yes, we're getting inside. Um, we will use those entrance doors made of wrought iron and we will see the inner courtyards of the house. We're getting wow. inside now, inside uh, the small courtyard of the building. Uh, even if it was the small one, it used to be uh, the main one because it was facing uh, Passage de Gracia Avenue. And maybe you're wondering why Gaudí decided to design those two inner courtyards in the middle of the building. But just because he wanted them to provide fresh air and light. He wanted apartments to be uh, full of light. That's why he, des he, he designed those two inner courtyards in the middle of the building. He used to talk about the two lungs of the house uh, when talking, when referring to those courtyards. Um, as you can see, we are surrounded. We can feel uh, the uh, natural inspiration in these courtyards. Have a look at the columns, for example you will see trees uh, rising up and have a look as well at the ceilings. Ceilings so beautiful, full of eh? mural paintings. We can see flowers. We can observe flowers that fill with sweet aromas the spaces where we are uh, just right now. Um, La Pedrera was very controversial, but you have to know that uh, the house was a very innovative building. Uh, for example, I don't know if you knew that the house had one of the first underground garages that we could see in Barcelona at the beginning of the 20th century. Did you know about that? No, I didn't. I know that it was controversial and, and I think it got Gaudi yeah. in jail, didn't it? Or like it got Gaudi in trouble with the law. He got in trouble. Oh, especially with Mr. and Mrs. Milan, they didn't they didn't have a good relationship because uh, as far as people were laughing at the building, Mr. and Mrs. Milan were not really happy with this idea. But anyway, Anthony Gaudi uh, designed a very special and innovative building. But that time, by that time, he was ahead of his time. He said two lifts in the house, one in each courtyard, that allowed those rich tenants living in the house to reach their apartments. You know, using high technology at that time. They had central heating. They had lots of innovations in the building we're discovering uh, today. Um, as you can see, we are uh, now standing here in the middle of the courtyard, but just in front of you, you can see uh, this private stair that goes to the main floor. Mr. and Mrs. Mila lived in the biggest apartment of the house. Uh, it went around the two courtyards of the building, this one and the one that we can't see actually that is on the other side of this of this tunnel 
And uh, the surface of this apartment was 1,300 square meters. It was almost like a palace. Wow. And on the main floor, we have four more floors uh, where uh, those uh, small apartments that they rented could be found. Now we will reach uh, the rooftop and we will make a short stop in the attic. Okay, so see you in a minute. Yes, and now I'm going to play you a nice video of La Padrera. That's very beautiful. Oh, we are still in the lift. Okay, we are getting a sneak preview We're of the lift. The, lift. <laughs> the high tech yes. technology is uh, isn't. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the today, are you quite uh, long at that time? So. It's taking longer. Yeah, no worries. Oh, sorry, uh, meanwhile, I have a question for you. Um, yes. Is it open? Are you open today or are we? Yes. Or are you you're open? Okay. No. We're closed. We're closed. Oh. We just open on Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. We're closed uh, most of the days. Yeah, we hope that very soon we'll be able to open more days. We are really looking forward to seeing, you know, visitors again here in, in the house. Yes. So we have an amazing so uh, insider now, uh, experience. In the attic of the house. Yes, that's it. You're alone in, in the house. We're alone now in the in the building. Yes, we're now under the rooftop. As you can see um, here in the attic, we have several arches. Yes, there are more or less uh, 270 cotinry arches. As you can see, they have different heights. They are made of bricks and uh, they are supporting the rooftop. That's why as every single thing in this house, the rooftop of the house has uh, an undulating shape because it has to adapt to the different forms of uh, those arches. And we usually talk about the attic of the whale. Yes, because if you look this way, you will see that when we look at those arches, we have this impression to be uh, inside a skeleton. Yes, we can see a spine and ribs of, on both sides. Yes, this is the space where a uh, hundred years ago, the mates used to do the laundry. Yeah, so we have to imagine um, some clothes hanging from ropes uh, and those ropes were going from one side to the other of those arches. Then uh, do you see the tiny little windows? Do yeah. you see them? Yes. Those windows, those windows were opened a hundred years ago and they used to provide fresh air so that the clothes uh, would uh, get dry. Now, uh, from here, we will reach the rooftop and we will use a spiral staircase yes that will take us to the very top of the house i don't know if you have any questions uh, regarding this area mark uh yes if anybody has any questions this is your time to ask them because now we're going to go to the rooftop and then while you're walking through i will play another short video that i have of la padrera and then we will see you in the rooftop so meanwhile if any of you watching us live which is there's quite a few of you um let us know any questions this is your chance to ask anything about this very famous unesco list uh, gaudi building in barcelona so i will see you in the in the rooftop very soon yes so see you in a minute
Awesome. We are back with you. And I see Good, that you, you are now me, in the famous rooftop. Yes, I can yes. hear you. Yes. Beautiful day. Yes. We are in what used to be, is, and probably will be one of the most in the world. Yes, we are now on the rooftop of La Pedrera. We can see what I've just said, uh, this undulating rooftop. We can see the walls going up and down. And we are very lucky, the sun is shining, so we have very, very nice views. We can see that we are surrounded by sculptures, yes. And uh, you will see that uh, Gaudi wanted things to be beautiful, but he wanted as well things to be practical, functional. That's why every single sculpture in this rooftop was used for something. Yes, for example, um, just uh, in front of us, we have this big sculpture. And we came from the sculpture we have just next to us. Those big sculptures used to be staircases. Yes, so inside we find a spiral stairs that connect the attic with the rooftop. But we have more things. We have ventilation towers as well. Just next to this big staircase in front of us, we have a tower with lots of holes. Uh, do you see it? Yeah. Yes, so this used to be a ventilation tower. We have another one on the other side of the terrace. Uh, we can't see it from here. We'll see it later on. And then we have more or less 30 chimneys. Chimneys that look like soldiers wearing helmets. Yes, they were also very controversial, but they became one of the symbols of the house. Yes, we have to imagine the smoke going out through the eyes of those, of those soldiers. Um, Gaudi uh, designed a building full of sculptures and he decorated some of them with this a broken down technique that we find in many other houses. For example, we find it in uh, Casa Batno, we find it as well in uh, Parguel. This broken tile technique is called Tancadiz. And we can see, we can appreciate it here. Here we can see the uh, broken pieces of tiles that he used to decorate some of the, some of the sculptures. Uh, Tancadiz comes from the word tranca, it means to break in Catalan language. And he just decorated some of the uh, sculptures here on the rooftop. In this rooftop, we had nice views on the neighborhood of La Champla. Yes. Champla means enlargement in Catalan language. And even if this was more a monumental rooftop, we have to say that Mr. and Mrs. Milá, if they had used this terrace, uh, they would have seen uh, the sea because uh, at the time when the house was being built, all those buildings around uh, were not here, and probably Mr. and Mrs. Nila had nice views on, on the sea. Wow. Nowadays, we can't see the sea, but we can see something else. We can see Gaudi's uh, masterpiece uh, in Barcelona. We can see uh, La Sagrada Familia. Uh, we can see it from here. As far as Gaudi was working in uh, La Sagrada Familia and at the same time he was working in other places like La Pedrera, Casa Badlo, we have you have to know that La Pedrera was his last civil work. So he preserved a very special place for uh, the work of his life, Sagrada Familia, here on the rooftop. And now we will go down those few steps and then we will start uh, going up again. And we will see an arch next to one of the staircases of the rooftop, which is framing La Sala Familia as if it was a picture. You will see it just in front of you. This is such a famous Instagram spot. Steps. Yes, everybody wants to take pictures of it. Yes. And from here, we can see La Sagrada Familia under construction. And this is, yes. yes, I think this is the, the most famous spot in in the house. Yes. I don't Amazing. Know and we have it all to ourselves. Are. I have, have a couple of questions for, for you. Yes. One question is, um, uh, I can see now who yes. it is the question from, but Good. was there some conflict at the time that inspired the soldier's shape for the chimneys? Well, I mean, everybody would look at the main facade, so every, everybody was surprised to see this big building made of stone. Then people would look up 
and they would see the chimneys that were like soldiers, you know, protecting symbolically, protecting the house. And I think that the house was controversial, but like the whole house was controversial. Um, I never heard about a specific uh, controversial thing about, about the chimneys. Uh, but at that time, everybody would talk about this house. Uh, in fact, we have to say that uh, more than 100 uh, years uh, went by, but uh, we still don't find we still don't find um, a, a building like this one in Barcelona. So imagine if we find it modern nowadays. It's not uh, surprising that a hundred years ago people would see a very strange building uh, here in in the in the heart of uh, Barcelona. Yeah, absolutely. And it's nice that you are finishing on the rooftop. It's a beautiful day in Barcelona and that you are finishing uh, showing us uh, uh, Sagrada Familia because this is where we are going next. So, well, thank you so much for taking us on a Good. tour. I really feel like we were so privileged that we had La Pedrera for ourselves only. So that's thank like you. another super exclusive private tour. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mark. And I, will, I hope to see you soon. To be with you today, and we were very lucky because the sun was shining, and uh, it's really amazing to see this incredible house uh, with this weather. And we hope that very soon uh, this rooftop will be again uh, full of visitors. And yes, thank you very much. Thank you, and see you soon. See you soon. Bye bye. You. Bye bye. Take care. Wow, that's awesome, right? Like now we have, um, we were in, um, we were in La Pedrera, and next we are going to Sagrada Familia, which is another super famous, if not the most famous, of Gaudi's works. And we are back with Arianna, who is going to take us on a tour of Sagrada Familia. So I will welcome Arianna back. Hi, Arianna, how are you? <laughs> Hello again. Fine. So I put you back and. Tell us a little bit about Sagrada Familia, this very, very famous um, work of Gaudi. Yeah, this is actually the masterpiece of Antoni Gaudi, the project he dedicated his entire life. Sagrada Familia, it's been under construction since 1882 and still not finished yet. Huh? Um, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is crazy. But the cathedrals during medieval times, they also take so long to build a cathedral, you know, it could take like two or three hundred years. So at least that's going to be not that long. Huh? And um, <laughs> yeah, well, he um, he started in this project in 1883. And while he was building other uh, projects like Casa Milà, Casa Vicenç, Casa Batlló, many other different uh, projects. He was also working on the project of Sagrada Familia. Um, when he actually, because we, we come from uh, Casa Milan, when he finished Casa Milan around 1912, he decided to move to live inside Sagrada Familia. He, by, by then, um, I'm turning the camera again. He was living uh, on a house he purchased in Paraguay and uh, let me see if you can see. Oh, okay. Yes. And, we can. and he decided, and he decided to move to live inside Sagrada Familia, completely obsessed about the construction and design of Sagrada Familia. Hmm? He wow. spent there like 14 years of his life. He was already an old man in his 60s and 70s, and he died on 1926, not because he was an old man but because he was hit by a tram uh, here in Barcelona on his way to the mess, going to the old town. Mm -hmm. And let you know, La Salada Familia is a project dedicated to the sacred family, the holy family, uh, which, you know, are Jesus Christ, Joseph and Mary. Uh, Gaudí was super religious, and this is like a kind of mix between his two passions, I would say. First, his love for God and the sacred family, and also his passion uh, being inspired on nature, as you know, uh, being also a modernist artist. Um, we are now in front of the Nativity facade as the whole project is dedicated to Jesus Christ's life. So this facade, the one I'm having in front of me, 
is the nativity of jesus let me take you a little bit closer wow it's amazing eh? like look at that intricate facade i mean how much detail i mean how many people for how many hours just to design that right isn't that the only facade that he saw himself finish before he died yeah that's right actually um this is the one that he uh, designed finished and he could see finished before he died and for now this is the only uh, facade uh, which is recognized by the, by the unesco as a world heritage for now only this facade and if you look the color of the stone and if you compare for example to this corner here we can see all this darker area is because it's older huh, from the time uh antoni gaudi was alive mm -hmm. let me show you for example um in here we are having the nativity on Belen's door i don't know if you can see it a little bit oh, yeah. the nativity on yeah. door. and here for example we have the three wisemen bringing presents to the baby born and the shepherds as well here bringing all the presents huh and also well we are having a lot of symbology huh like um the tree of life huh? which is a, a cypress tree and also let you know well here we can see four towers uh in total because uh when the project will be finished we're going to have three facades for now we are only having two finished and four towers in each facade total of 12 towers dedicated to the 12 apostles hmm? dedicated to the 12 apostles um now i'm taking you a little bit just to show you the back side well as you can see we're still having the crane so it is easy to see it's still under construction this is the most visited monument not only in barcelona but also in spain before COVID times, Sagrada Familia was receiving over 5 million visitors every year, getting inside the monument to visit it. Yeah. And actually, um, they had a deadline to finish the project, which was uh, 2026, because they wanted to celebrate the 100 years of death of Mr. Antonio Gaudí. But COVID changed everything. So right now we don't know when that's going to finish because for now it's closed to the visitors and also they um, stopped the construction for quite a long time and they had they have a new deadline. As you can see this tower here at the end of this year for by Christmas, they want to, they want to finish it because this is going to be Mary's star at the very top of this tower. We're gonna have a 12 point star dedicated to Mary and they want to have it lighted for Christmas. Hmm? Oh, how nice, no? Yeah, at least, at least. Huh? Let's see, we're not sure now when, when they are going to finish the project. Everything is so unsure right now. Yes, I'd love to hear if, uh, for those of you who are watching us, if you have visited Sagrada Familia, Aisha said, says, uh, that she spent an entire day in Sagrada Familia when she visited. Yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's amazing, actually. And Hannah um, says that she can never get tired of looking at Sagrada Familia. I agree, I have been four times. I, do you ever get tired, Ariana? You must have taken many tours I, there. I never, I never. And one of the things I love the most is watching uh, the people's expression, you know? <laughs> I, I, I have seen people crying, you know? We so so i mean it's, it's it, it takes the breath away and and see how people are getting that amazed is is one of the things i love the most definitely yes it's beautiful now i'm gonna i'm gonna walk to the other side to show you the second facade which is also finished and then in the meantime while you're walking i'm gonna show you all guys a video that that uh, shows what the Sagrada Familia will be when it is completed and what is missing. So let me add this into the stream. I will make it bigger so that you can all watch it. It's a video on YouTube that you can all watch. And now you can see what the, what the building will look like when it's completed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, I think it's amazing. And you know what? I'm going to play it again because I love watching it. <laughs> but you can see, guys, it said that it was going to be finished in 2026, right? That was the original plan, that the Basilica would be finished by 2026. And so I'm just going to very briefly play it again um, because I, you missed the beginning. But uh, some parts that are shown on the video are already completed, and Ariana will show you just now. This is the Mary Tower that you were talking about, right, Ariana? Yes. Amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this video, Mar, was actually perfect to give an idea to the people of how the project is going to look like once it's going to be finished. Um, I told you we are going to have 12 towers around in total for each uh, facade, 12 dedicated to the 12 apostles. But you also have seen how, on between the 12 towers, um, four bell towers are going to rise up which actually i can show you a little bit for example here this is a bell tower and also here on between we have uh, a, a a big um, uh, tower so here we are having the four bell towers dedicated to the four evangelists and on between the four evangelist bell towers we're gonna have a huge cross you've seen dedicated to Jesus Christ, that's going to have a size of 173 meters height from the very top of the building wow. to the bottom, becoming um, the highest um, building in Barcelona and the highest religious temple on earth. Huh? Um, yeah, it is that size. It's just a few meters below Woodwick Hill because um, Antonio Gaudí didn't want to build anything higher than the size God decided to be the highest one in Barcelona. So that's why. Huh? Yes, you, Gaudí didn't want to build higher than God. Exactly, exactly. So a lot of respect for God's decisions. Okay, so now we are in front of the Passion and Death facade, remember? Uh, the whole uh, temple is dedicated to Jesus' life. So at the other side, uh, it was the nativity, and this is the death. And it shows us uh, not only the way Jesus died, but he's trying to represent also the drama of how he died. Um, this facade, um, the sculptures were not designed by Gaudí, were designed by, by a, a very famous Catalan sculptor called Josep Maria Subirax. Huh? So in 1986, they proposed him the project of finishing the second facade of Sagrada Familia, and obviously he couldn't say no. Huh? Imagine. And here, well, here we're having again a lot of symbology. For example, in this corner we have the Last Supper here, and for example here we are having Jesus being arrested already, uh, Pontius Pilate's uh turning his back cleaning his hands he doesn't want to know anything about jesus and here for example we can see how Jesus is carrying the cross and falling down uh, veronica uh, helping him to dry the tears and sweat from his face the crucifixion uh? and here for example on the very very top and between these two towers we can see the resurrection of jesus after three days represented on a bronze sculpture right here huh? and in here where well it says in latin uh jesus of nazareth king of jews 
-hmm. Something that Amazing. was written. <laughs> it was written on the cross when he was crucified. Huh? Yeah. It's, it's, it's really amazing. Some people say they don't like this facade uh, because it's very different to the first one. And to me, it makes sense. They, they used different uh, styles because um, they tried to represent different feelings. At the other side, everyone was happy celebrating Jesus' birth. But here, everything is, I would say, like so square, uh, straight lines, very cubist. And because, you know, he's trying to represent us sadness. Yes, exactly. I wonder if, uh, if for, all of you who are, for all of you who are watching us live, if you have any questions, this is your chance to ask Ariana anything before, uh, before she finishes her tour. So don't be shy. Uh, say hi. Even if you don't have a question, you can say hi. You can tell us where you are and where you're watching from. And if you have any questions, which I am sure that you do, because it's impossible not to watch such an amazing bu um, building with so much detail and not have anything to ask. So this is your last chance to ask any questions live. And if you're watching the replay, you can also ask them later because Ariana is also in the group with us. Um, it's amazing, right, Ariana? And, and today is such a beautiful day. And of course, because right now um, Sagrada Familia is closed, um, it's almost like a, a once in a lifetime opportunity to see it without hundreds of people around taking pictures, taking selfies, taking photos, uh, posing, queuing, waiting for their turn, buying their tickets. It's normally this street is so, so crowded, right? Super crowded. One of the most crowded areas of the city, obviously. And now, yeah, well, it's just the regular traffic around. Yes. And you were telling me that when you are uh, taking the tour, uh, tourists around, that you always need to remind them to make sure that they look at either side before crossing the road, because they are so mesmerized with the building that they're like, oh, and then they walk and they walk into the traffic. Yeah, that's true. Actually, in this area, uh, during hike season, a lot of uh, accidents happened. Because even if we say to uh, the tourists, they need to be aware about the traffic. Um, it's, it's, I mean, you need to understand, once you cross uh, any corner and you have no expectations of what you are going to see, and suddenly this huge, amazing building comes up, you know, people, people get shocked and they forget about anything else, you know? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ariana, for giving us this tour. This was amazing. I learned so many things that I didn't know, even though I've visited Sarada Family, I don't know, maybe five times. Uh, and I feel like every time that I visit is different because, of course, the building is different. And there's something new that has been added or like some new tower that is, was not there before. And of course, now at the end of the year, there's going to be Mary's Tower. So then I'll be, ha I'll be having something to look forward to visiting when I go. I am glad you enjoyed Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ariana. See you soon. See you. Bye bye. And now, before we go to the next place, next with us, we have Casa Batlló. Casa Batlló, this is a very special visit that we have now because not only the house is closed and we again have an exclusive tour of a house that's usually incredibly, incredibly popular, but also because we are going to experience uh, something that is new and that hasn't been done anywhere else, which is their new 10D experience. So from Casa Vallo, we are going to have this sneak preview of something that, um, that, you know, that they are launching to the public on the 14th of May. So we are seeing it 10 days before the public, right? And so we're going to go to Casa Vallo and we're going to explore the, the, the house and also explore these new uh, spaces, these new 2,000 square meters of new spaces and experiences uh, that are coming with us. So let me first show you a video in the meantime so that you have a good understanding of what Casa Vallo's new experience is like. Um, just give me a second and then...
had to be there. You know, it's one of those places that you need to come in and not just pass by. I wanted to take a peek, but I just had to look. It's like you go in and suddenly your life is no longer measured by a ticking clock. Every single moment that passes by is inspirational. I wish you were here because you're the type of person who would definitely feel touched by all the details. We would explore everything from top to bottom. Well, in this special house, moving upwards to a point where we can just be ourselves. Walls and ceilings will blow your mind, surrounded by breathtaking colors and sparkling lights. I really think this is my place. It's been waiting for me to cross all its doors to be amazed. It's like this new other fascinating world that's been there all along, but we never got the chance to visit. Casa Baccio. Such a magical place to be. Wow, you guys, like, I think this is something that's going to be really special. And, um, and Casa Vallo is actually going to give us a sneak preview into this, like, new show. I don't know if any of you has ever been to Casa Vallo. I know that I have visited a few times and that every time that I have friends or visitors coming along, um, they, I, that's the place that I take them to because in the end, you know, it's a house that I really love and that is very nice because they always had this... 3D experiences, this virtual reality. You could, uh, you know, put the, the, you know, the typical guide, uh, uh, you know, the, your your PDA kind of like uh, a device, and show it at, at things, pointed at things, and then you would see them coming to life. Like the the chimney comes alive as a snail, and you know, the lights are like uh, turtles and things like that. So it's always like very nice to take people there to Casa Vallo. But I think this new then the experience is going to take them to the next level, right? So um, I am very excited that we are able to show you um, this new experience uh, and that they are gonna be coming live uh, to give us that preview. Um, I would like to also know if you have any questions about uh, Casa Vallo or any of the other places that, that we have visited while we are waiting for a couple of minutes for them to be joining us. Um, so if you have any questions, do put them in the comments and then we can ask them uh, when they join us. I also know that um, if you have questions on the previous places we have seen, Sagrada Familia, Hospital de San Pau, or uh, La Pedrera, you can also add them in the comments because uh, all of the ladies that you have seen, they are also in the group and they can answer the questions anytime. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to bring Tahira with me how, how have you been enjoying the Tendi experience? Oh, you're muted. Let me unmute you. Uh, you're mute. You're uh, muted, Tahira. Sorry, actually, it reminded me of Interstellar. You know the movie where they go out to space. I think that Casa Batio is very futuristic, and actually, every time I go there, I feel like, like you said, right? You have fresh eyes, and you see something all over again. And watching this Tendi video was very helpful in just imagining how things could look like in the future and you know even attractions which are based in our like dimension could take on another form which is why i was really excited to see what casa but you could show us today yeah to to have that vision i think yeah exactly you're right it's a little bit like uh, at la pedrera the chimneys the soldiers they look like the star wars so i wonder if uh who right, i guess star wars could have been inspired by la pedrera right because in the end, i don't know it, was it just me to be honest like i've only very recently watched star wars and i've only watched one of the i don't know nine or ten movies that there are. i only watched it a couple of weeks ago and of course it's quite uh, uh you know recent in my mind but it's quite yeah. interesting to see that uh that it reminds of it. So I wonder if uh, Star Wars took inspiration from that. But yes, yeah. like you say, the Tendi experience is a little bit the same, right? Actually, I think one of the people responding on the Facebook Live asked what the Tendi experience is about or like what is Tendi? Yes, you know, like uh, uh, when I watched it first, it reminded me of... Um, um, uh, um, how you say this? Like Team Lab. I don't know if anybody has been to Japan, or they also have exhibitions in other places around the world. 
But um, here in Singapore, we also have a small exhibition by Team Lab at the Art Science Museum. And it's this sort of like um, music and light that's also interacting with people, right? Like you saw in the video. So if you are moving, the light moves with you, the music moves with you. It kind of detects that there's a person and it moves with you. So, you know, if there's like, fish projected on the floor, then, you know, like uh, the fish are like uh, moving around and you can move them around and so on. So like, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like that, right? It's it's kind of moves with you. So it's not just 3D, but it also like detects that there's a person there and that, you know, that that it should move. So if there's a fish, it can move and understand that you are there, right? So it's a little bit like that. It's It's kind of cool, right? I like that the experiences are really changing. I mean, back in a time when we didn't even have all this kind of technology, it was just using your eyes. But now technology has helped us to have like six different eyes, which is really like the future of tourism, I think. Yes. And even if you're seeing it virtually, it is almost a little bit the same, right? You're still seeing it like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Let me just have a check on Casa Batio as well, if they are coming on. Yes, I am going to play the video once again because I think it's like really cool and I've watched it 10 times but every time that I watch it it's like I see something that I didn't see before. Yeah. places that you need to come in and not just pass by. I wanted to take a peek, but I just had to look. It's like you go in and suddenly your life is no longer measured by a ticking clock. Every single moment that passes by is inspirational. I wish you were here because you're the type of person who would definitely feel touched by all the details. We would explore everything from top to bottom. Well, in this special house, moving upwards to a point where we can just be ourselves. Walls and ceilings will blow your mind, surrounded by breathtaking colors and sparkling lights. I really think this is my place. It's been waiting for me to cross all its doors to be amazed. It's like this new, other fascinating world that's been there all along, but we never got the chance to visit. Casa Baccio such a magical place to be. I love the message of like, you know, I wish you were here, right? So um, I we have Casa Valle with us now. So uh, Tahira, I will remove you and then I will add Anahi. Hi, Anahi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Absolutely. Uh, sorry, How are you? I think there were some, some difficulties. So no problem. Hello. Um, hello, so we are going. Let me bring back Anahi. Sorry. Okay, so Anahi, I will. I am okay. glad that we have you here. We have we have played I, the video I, for everybody, so now everybody knows about the Tandy experience, and everybody's like super curious and super excited and super like uh oh that's you know. great that's great news because we are opening on the 14th of, of may so everybody's invited to come to, to to the new visit awesome so why don't you tell us a little bit more about casa Valle and then we'll i was waiting for you to come because i didn't want to break the you know the news too early uh, and i didn't want to like you know i didn't want to give the preview before you could uh, explain yourself so if you if you would like to give us a little bit of a tour and then we can play the video later Okay, okay, perfect. Well, I think that we can we can start just here in the in the facade so you can have an idea of what what's the singularity of, of this iconic building which is 
one of the, mo the masterpieces of the, of the architect, especially Casa Batillo because it was built because between 1904 and 1906, and it's located in the in also uh, as La Pedrera in, in Passage de Gracia, in, in the main center of the city. But uh, one of the most iconic places is, is uh, the facade, just because of its um, uh, its colors and, uh, and because of its singularity. There are actually many, many legends uh, surrounding uh, the inspiration of the house. It is called the House of the Bones, as you can, as you can see, the House of the Bones, the House of the Masks. But the legend that, is more, uh, that has more weight of, uh, among all of them is the legend of St. George, which I don't know if you, uh, you, you, may, you may probably know this, this legend, Mar, but it, uh, it talks about a dragon that kidnapped a princess and about a knight uh, to, that to save her, in order to save her, fought with the, with the dragon and from, the, from that fight, uh, from the blood of the dragon, was born a bunch of, of roses. And this legend is very, very singular and very special, for the, especially for the Catalan people. Actually, the day it, uh, it is uh, in the 23rd of, of the month of April, uh, it's uh, the, the city of Barcelona is full of roses because everybody, the, the men give a rose to the woman and the woman give a, a, a book to, to the men. And we, uh, since five years ago, we cover the facade of full of roses, of red roses. To yes, her. and that was last week, right? Or a couple of weeks ago. Exactly, just one week ago, it was covered by, by roses. But if you want more, we can go inside so you can have also a look of what's inside the, inside the Casa Batio. Yes, absolutely, let's go inside. I particularly love the first floor. It's just so beautiful to be behind the facade that we've just seen, right? Behind those beautiful build, um, uh, glasses and windows. Yes, we're going to the naval floor where the former owners of the house, the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Baggio, used to live. As you can see, there are two entrances. This is the entrance for the people that lived in the in the building, and this was the one that uh, has the shape of a mushroom. This one is the is the was the entrance for the for the owners of the house, like the the private house. So if you want, we can go inside and just have a look. How they used to get inside their, their apartments. So, uh, one of the most important things you have to keep in mind when you come to Casa Batia is the inspiration of, of nature. That we was very inspired in the nature, which is something that is very present in the new visit that we are launching on the day on, on day 14, uh, because we wanted to, to everybody to uh, get to know. Uh, what was inside Gaudí's imagination? He was raised in the in the nature, surrounded by by uh, by trees, by rivers, everything. So, as you can see, for example, this could be like the shape of a turtle. Yes. <laughs> this is the main the hall, and if we go upstairs, amazing. We are going to the number four. And, and even this staircase is very beautiful, right? It looks the same as the facade with the bones. Exactly. This is this could be uh, imitating the shape of the of the bones of the of the dragon, which, uh, as you can see, it's very present in every single corner. Uh, dragons are one of the main words in in Casa, for Casa Batio. So this is the hall where they used to get inside their, their private apartment. As you can see, it's full of lights. These are also like shapes of turtles, fishes, or things like that. And the first thing that we are doing is this, which is in particular my, my favorite place. This is Mr. Batiot's study, where he used to work and where he could um, get inside this fantastic chimney that has the, the shape of, of a mushroom. Nature is always surrounding us. I love so this. <laughs> it preserves the heat. It's very good. So everybody could take a good seat inside and enjoy the, the heat. I love it. Also, if we have a look 
to the to the walls, they are covered by 24 karat gold leaf, which is a reflection of how important were the business that took inside this uh, this area of the house. Yes. I mean, uh, the walls are covered in, in gold leaf, right? I mean, that's, I guess, exactly. where Mr. Vallejo used to do business, right? And have his business partners. Yes. So this study of Mr. Vallejo goes directly to the living room. Uh, the stained glasses that covers all the, all the doors reminds the, the shape of um, of uh, anything that we could find in the sea, for example, mass, um, uh, mussels, or yeah, like a sea snails, like eggs. conch, yes. seashells, this sort of. They embrace the, the daylight, as you can see, and, and they enhance the color of, of each room because because actually the living room is divided in three rooms. Each one has its own color. This one, for example, the walls are, are, are pink. These one are kind of a between blue and gray. And those ones are uh, yellow, yellow gold. So here we have an overview of the Passage de Gracia, which you won't be able to see that much because of the light. But here like, we have a privileged uh, site of the Passage de Gracia, so the owners of the house could enjoy. Uh, reviews and uh, well, I mean, nobody could uh, see them inside. Um, and also, if you have a look to the ceiling, you can see the shape that is also inspired in the in the deep sea. Yes, it looks exactly like a snail's uh, shell. Uh -huh. As you can see, this house inside has a lot of imagination. It's not everything in the, in the facade, which is something that. Uh, all the people that comes uh, or that stops by the by the facade, they, they get uh, impressed because of the, how colorful it is. But they don't know that inside, the magic continues. We we find so so many color in in every single uh, corner of this house. Their imagination has no limits inside. Yes, absolutely. So if you want to go to the backyard. Where yes. the used to used to enjoy the, their privacy because they didn't have any. Uh, it's like the op in the opposite part of the of the of the building. Yes, the back patios are very typical of a Champla buildings, right? Every building in a Champla has this sort of interior patios. Exactly, and this part is very privileged because uh, here we can find also another piece that is very. Uh, common for uh, for Gaudi's architecture, which is the Trencadis, which we already knew in, in, in La Pedrera, and which we, we have very present here in, in, the, in the back there, patio. Yes, I love this. This patio also in the summertime, you do concerts, right? Yes, but we are doing the concert uh, currently in the rooftop, which we are will be launching also in, in the month of, of June. You, we used to do it, uh, the concerts here, but since I think it was 2018, we started doing them in the rooftop. So you have a view of, of Barcelona, which is also very privileged. Yes, I love this patio. It's so peaceful, it's so calm, and it's so beautiful with all the decoration. Yes, and also the, the, the owners of the house could have like more privacy here inside uh, because it, they didn't get the, also the, the noise or the views of, of Passage de Gracia and they could enjoy them just for themselves. Yes. For the family. So if you want, we can we can go upstairs to, to go so you can see the rooftop and you can have an idea of uh, which are the views and, and also some other details that we can find there, for example, like the, the skin of the dragon, which is very, very present upstairs. Yes, absolutely. And then in the meantime, I am going to play the 10 video so that everybody can see what, what I've been hyping up for the last 20 minutes. So now they can see it. And when, we, when you get to the roof, um, you can also explain it in more detail. OK, perfect. So we're going upstairs. Hello. Can you guess where I am? In Casa Batlló. No, we haven't gone mad. Or maybe yes, just a little. But I promise 
it will be worth it. Will you join me? Let me talk about Casa Batyo 10D experience, the new immersive experience of Casa Batyo. It hasn't been an easy road. More than five years and the colossal work of our entire team, which with the help of engineers, architects, have made possible this project that I come to show you today. More than 2,000 square meters of route never seen so far, and a long list of news. We have two immersive rooms, Gaudi Dome. The first room with a dome of more than a thousand screens, 21 audio channels, and a mapping that delves into the inspiration of the genius. We want the visitors to take a trip to the true source of his inexhaustible imagination, nature. At Gaudi Cube, a unique seed-sided lead cube in the world, we enter the architect's mind at the hands of digital artist Refik Anadol. We have compiled millions of data, videos, plans, writings, drawings, 3D models, to create a 360 experience that will envelop you in an incomparable sea of sensations. But this is not all. We have new script, available in 15 languages, accompanied by a unique soundtrack recorded by the Berlin Symphony Orchestra. And to make the experience sublime, smart headphones with stereo sound. In addition, the visitor can take a trip to the past. How have we made it possible? Well, the answer is always the same. Innovation. Magical paintings on the wall that come to life when the visitor approaches, so that they can be transported back in time and contemplate the life of the time or any other day in Casa Batio family. Can you imagine? But not everyone will see or experience the same thing. We want each person to leave the house with a unique and unforgettable memory. And I could still go on. There are many surprises. If you want to know all of them, check the document attached to the email. There you will find all the details. Anyway, do not hesitate to write me if you have any questions. Or even better, if you want to come and experience in person the most impressive cultural visit in the world. We are waiting for you. Well, <laughs> I think you're going to receive an email from everyone watching. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We made it possible. So, well, welcome to the roof terrace of, of Casa Radio. We're going to have a look. Did you see? Uh, well, the first thing that you may notice is, is that there are 27 ceramic and glass chimneys that surround it, surrounding us. That instead of positioning them at random, uh, in randomly, Gaudi group them together so they could be a, a site, an artistic piece instead of a of of an obstacle. Yes, and they are like the soldiers of La Pedrera. Exactly, very very similar. They also covered by the trencadies. And if you, if we go a little bit closer, sorry, we, we <laughs> ran to him. <laughs> to no our roof. Okay, we're going to the most surprising element of the of the roof terrace, uh, which is here. Is the roof that covers the, the the terrace, which is known as the dragon back. Okay, so if we look closely at the ceramic tiles, their unique pattern resembles the the scales of a, of a huge reptile, while we'll, the winding uh, colors give it a uh, movement. It is also linked, of course, with the legend of San, San Jordi that I, I just told you before, Mar. Yeah, this is the back side of the dragon that was on the facade, right? Exactly. Like, because right now you are right on the facade. You're, you're, you know, Passage Terracia is just below you. Yes, we can have a look here and we can see the Passage the, the, the Gracia that we were talking about before in the, in the naval floor. And also, if you if we have a look to the to the that four armed cross that we have here, it symbolizes or it, it represents the the sword that Saint George uh, plunged into the the animals back to free the princess and, and the people from from the dragon. So as you can see, there everything 
is, is very linked to this legend in, in Casa Batlló. Yes, everything is about San Jordi and the dragon and, you know, if you're yes, Catalan, and... there's no way you not know about San Jordi, yes, right? It's very Catalan. And here is where we do the, the Magic Nights, uh, the, the concerts. We normally do them from, from the month of May uh, till October, more or less. Right. And so you'll have like a small concert and then people can sit here in the evening and see the sunset and enjoy nice music. Exactly. They can have a drink and they, we have different music from Spanish guitar, flamenco, jazz. Uh, they, you, can, you can choose wh whatever you, uh, you prefer. And it is actually it's very successful. Uh, we've been doing this for more over than, I think, five years. And uh, people always ask, when are you launching them again? Because they, are, they have become very, very, very unique, I think, because of the place that you are in and also because of the show that we are doing. Yes. And obviously, you know, the summer evenings in uh, Catalonia are always very nice in Barcelona. Yes. The Mediterranean summer. Yes, I think all of this week, uh, everybody's going to go away with the idea that, you know, Catalan people, we enjoy life, we have a drink, always have a drink, always have <laughs> a friend nearby, always enjoy the good weather and always have a good time, which I think is true in a way. Yeah, in a way it is true, yeah. So, oh, well, I'm I think that me. it is more or less what, what we want to talk to you and also uh, take the advantage of, of launching this new visit that we told you about uh, the, the 3D experience that you already saw. And just to invite everyone to, to come to, to visit this new project that we are very happy because we've been working for more than five years and I think it's going to be very impressive and very successful, we hope so. Awesome. I look forward to seeing uh, to seeing it myself yes, as well. Have to come. And, yes, have and to I think that this is a great opportunity for everybody, even if you have been to Casa Vallejo before, to go back again and to like explore the new TND experience, which is I think going to be very unique. So I think, I think that whole, whole different experience. Yes, exactly, an entirely different experience from just visiting the house. But you will you will also be able to visit the rest of the house, right? Yes, for sure. It's everything. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Anahi. I love uh, seeing the rooftop again. I love seeing Casa Vallejo. I always take everybody there. Uh, and I'm sure it's brought nice memories to everybody who is watching this. Yes. Thank you very much for having us today, Mark. See you soon. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Wonderful. So after Casa Vallejo, we have um, Casa Vicente next. And that is another of uh, Gaudi's uh, uh, projects and buildings, one of his earlier ones. So we're actually finishing the day almost like at the beginning, where it all started almost for Gaudi. Uh, Casa Vicente has also not been open to the public for too long, so probably many of you have never seen it before. Um, I only visited not so long ago. So if you have been to Casa Vicente, let us know in the comments. Tell us what you liked about it. If you haven't, this is your chance to have a sneak peek again without any tourists and our own exclusive tour with the team at Casa Vicente, who I'm now going to bring on the screen. Mercedes is gonna be with me. Hi, Mercedes. Hello, thank you very much, Mar. Thank you, Catalonia Experience. Thank you, Solo Fibon Travel Community, for having a walk with us. I'm Mercedes, part of the team of Casa Vicente. And uh, I just can say thank you for giving us the opportunity uh, to walk with you this amazing garden and house. The, as you said, the first house that Gaudi protected when he was 30 years old. So thank you very much. Uh, Imagine, right? He was only a young uh, man. He didn't know back then that he was going to be so famous. No, uh, it turned to be that this house is constructed in 1883. And imagine both uh, the architect and the client. It's amazing because it turned to be a construction. So very important for Barcelona, very important historically because it is like the beginning for this uh, Modernisme Català, Catalan Art Nouveau, but at that time it wasn't known, so it's amazing. So it's also amazing, I think, and very, very beautiful to see. Um, and in relation to all the buildings we are showing uh, today in Barcelona related to this ar architect, that in his first uh, construction, nature, nature becomes architecture. 
Yes, and, and Casa Vicente is very green and it's full of trees and for something that's actually, the house is not as big as some of the other buildings, but yet everything is so colorful and so green and, and so much surrounded by nature and trees. Yes, so the story is uh, there is a stockbroker that at that time he wanted to have a summer house. So as you said, it's a small house related to other constructions of this architect. And it's amazing because it was located in a neighborhood of Barcelona, Gracia, well-known neighborhood right now, but it was in Barcelona at the time. So people used to spend summers over there. And that's, uh, I think, one of the reasons uh, for, for Gaudi and his client, Mr. Vicens, to project a small house in a big garden. And when I think, or when, when we, all the team, when we heard, when we hear uh, visitors talk about what they most uh, appreciate of, of this house is that because they can be connected uh, to this garden, to that moment, and to the summers of Barcelona, to, to this great city that, that, that uh, about nature, we have a, a lot to say. And this architect is one of the most uh, important uh, persons that left uh, a, a, a beautiful heritage to this city now. So walking it and walking around the garden, I think it's really, really nice. Yes, so, and I can even hear the birds. Uh, yes, and the water. So I, I would like, I'm with Pilar today, she's filming, but she's uh, always with me in this, in, in this kind of, of, uh, of uh, events. And uh, when we walk Casa Vicens, we say, so it's, full of details, ornamentation. Uh, it's full of a point of water. So you are surrounded, you are like in an oasis. So we like to say that and people say that and I, I find it beautiful because that means that people find peace and people is able to, to connect with oneself when, when walking uh, around Casa Vicente. And that's very, it's very, so it's a question to appreciate, you know. Um, when Gaudí projected this house, he, he, he had uh, ended university um, three years before uh, projecting this house. So here we see like lots of influences, but it's not the architecture that we find in other, in other moments. So here, Moorish architecture, English, uh, Catalan architecture, they, they all are together in order to um, make like an explosion of different, many different styles that give us many, many colors, lights, shadows, and many, many details as graffitos, uh, pottery, ceramics, um, mural paintings, uh, geometric figures. So I, I love like to think that everybody has a beginning in his professional career or, or as a human being. And uh, here, so we have a small house, but be, um, a small house that represented and nowadays represents a lot in order to understand uh, the later career that this genius that we see now had. Yes, absolutely. And, and and you were telling me earlier also that in here the ceramics are not Trancadis, right? We have seen Trancadis. We saw it yesterday when we went to Parkway. We saw it today in La Padrera in Casa Valle. But in here it's full full tiles, not broken yet. Yeah, that's that's part of uh, the evolution of a uh, of a person, of a profession, and uh, of the of the of the language of every person that works uh, in in any kind of a. Uh, of a profession, you know. So here it wasn't, uh, it was very innovative, innovating at that time. So putting the ceramics outside and it was uh, more Moorish than, than Catalan. But of course, later on, when you see Trencadiz, it's like, wow. So he started with, with ceramics and later on uh, thinking about recycling materials and all that. It's amazing how the, the, the visual of this of this person, of this architect, changes. So here, when when he saw the plot and, and there was a, so Mr. Vicens um, got this this plot for uh, from her, her mother, uh, he saw this flower called the marigold 
and also uh, the palm trees. And he decided that they would be uh, nature elements that would uh, enhance nature in this house. But in this house is ornamentation and not a uh, very elaborated architecture. And, and that's really, really nice to have ceramics to understand later on what is happening in Casa Badio. At the same time here, we have the first uh, transitable terrace, but it's smaller uh, of, of that that we can see in Parkway or, or in Pedrera or in Casa Badio. But in our size, I think it's amazing to, uh, so to have the possibility to, to, to get to know uh, an, a young Gaudi and how, how did it start? So yes, people it's true. say that, and, and, and we have this idea of proximity of uh, a, a person in, in, in his earliest works. And, and of course, later on, wow, who could imagine that he would represent so much for the world? So Casa Vicente is also uh, a World Heritage site. And who would, would imagine? You know? So in this house, when you walk around it and, and you see the the palm trees or, or the, 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 the mural paintings, the English influences, the Moorish influences. So I think it's worth it because of that, because you, you just walk, you are in, in a neighborhood uh, with plenty of culture and uh, people are friendly and it's, it's so inspiring. I don't know. What can I say? Yes, and I, I love well, like, like you're telling me, you're next to the street right now, right? So if you look at the street, I think people will, when I visited Casa Vicente, and how long ago did you open to the public? Three years ago? Yeah, so it was in, it was the World Heritage Day was November 16th, uh, 2017. Um, and it was uh, amazing. We, we did uh, a great, I think a great job in learning, um, talking to other Gaudis that were already open and we learned a lot. We learned a lot and, and we tried to make community. Uh, so yeah, it's, so it was the first house, but, but the, the last one to open to the public. So right. I think that's also very, very interesting. Yeah, and, and because it didn't open so long ago, right? When I went to visit it for the first time a couple of years ago, I was surprised because it's in the middle of Gracia, right? It is unlike La Padrera or Casa Vallo or Sagrada Familia or Parkway, which are grand and surrounded by lots of space. You are actually in a small, narrow street, right? So you're we like are... literally like there's a house next door and there's a house in front, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. And, and it, so... We, we love uh, when, when it was uh, um, closed and before the, uh, the opening. So you could see that, that uh, we, I, I'm, I'm also a traveler. I love traveling. So, uh, so we could see travelers. And I would say I, I, I had seen many, many, not, all, not only female, but solo travelers, that they have read uh, about this house and and the meaning of this house and this uh, this architecture and, and and we could see many people like just staring at that facet because only about colors it's um, so inspiring and it's it's peaceful but yeah and so the, the story of the house it used to have a very very big garden so uh, with the story of Barcelona and and every so we, we lost a lot a lot of garden but still uh, the garden is very present and what I love most is that in his first project nature comes inside the house so you can see it in the gallery and uh, presiding the Tribune you can see it in a in a little gym we have uh, inside and it's a smoking room so uh, I'm going to show the yeah now you can see actually the, the Tribune and gallery that you were just talking about, which is behind you, right? Like right now on your right is the is the gallery, which I am showing on the screen. So you can all see exactly. the photo of what it looks like inside. Exactly. So, yeah. So it's a room that it's um, very well known to have a really Moorish influences. It's blue, but the blue is so amazing. So it reminds uh, lots of people, reminds uh, to be Alhambra, uh, which in Spain is also very, very known. So we know that 
when when this Gaudi was when this young Gaudi he he didn't have troubles, but he loved like reading books, uh, watching photographs about um, the world architecture. So this reminiscence of the Moorish, um, it's amazing. So the tradition was that men, after having a lunch or dinner, they would go to this room and smoke. And uh, it's beautiful because the materials that, that uh, the materials used were paper, the papier mache, but it's paper. So, so I think these details is what what is the value of Casa Vicente? So I, I I wouldn't say so. You can see that line and geometric um, lines are, are are more present here than in other Gaudi's buildings, but it's colors and and different techniques mixed. What what turns to be to be very interesting, uh, like for for knowing the seed of it, of of in this sense Gaudi. So he left the seed here yes absolutely and i have the picture that uh, because i think today you're doing a photo shoot right so we cannot go inside uh, but i have a nice picture of the dining room because when you were talking about the murals and the ornamentation when i walked into the dining room i was very shocked right i was like oh my god like the ceiling is so intricate right like and on the photo maybe you don't see it so clearly but the ceiling is covered in like clay ceramic like i don't know it's like it's, it has relief. It's not just painted, right? It has leaves with like relief in 3D. Yeah. So in every in every one of the rooms that we have inside Casa Vicente, and in this one that that you're talking about, and we, we can see in the picture. So all the ceilings on the beams are um, wooden beams, but uh, uh, they they are so there's ceramic and papa mache on them. And in every room, you can see a different uh, motif of nature. And you can see lots of motifs of, of nature. So um, fruits are represented, different flowers are represented. And that's so that was the connection that I was talking between the garden of this house and, the, and, the, and all the motifs of nature that so nature is, is going inside the house. So flowers of a um, I don't know leaves and and it's I think it's quite quite inspira inspirating. And Gaudi already started with the rooftops that made him famous, right? So I have a picture of the rooftop uh, and the tower there. That it's not the same as in like say Casa Mayor or La Pedrera, but he always made he always started already from the beginning to do something with the chimneys. It's not just the chimney, right? It's like there are towers and like the rooftops are nice in some way. Yeah, they are beautiful. In the picture, you're seeing now one of the towers, but in fact, um, there are three chimneys in one tower. And it's, I think it's, yeah, it's very interesting. And seeing the project, the first one that he did, I love to see uh, that, of course, when you start things in your life, uh, you don't know, but um, you're, in your inside, you take some of them, and, and, and you make them bigger and, and greater um, so as, as time goes by and and, and I, I love to, to, to see this this terrace that it's not maybe that monumental as the, the other ones but I love to see the, this little seed in, in this house so in, a, in our measure uh, I think it's very interesting to, to get to know uh the significance of, of this architect and and his language yes absolutely yes it's really nice to to see the house mercedes and and tell me what is your favorite uh what, what when you have your friends and family coming to visit casa Vicente, where do you take them first wow that's uh so i like so much traveling and uh when they come so i normally take into account if the if it's the first time that they visit Barcelona or or even if they are making second visits of course every one of us we have our our preferences uh, some of sometimes so evidence I take them if I can to Casa Vicente but of course I love to to take them uh, to the coast I love to take them to to visit exhibitions in in any other museums 
I love to take him, if I can choose, uh, so between Casabadio Pedrera, so I like to, to do many things. I'm, so I'm a, very, a little bit like uh, hyperactive and I, I love making pictures. So normally I try to make a program so that they ha can have these, like you are doing. So have a whole idea of, a, of a, that there's a city with a lot of cultures, creativity, but in many ways, not, not only with monuments. So walking around or, or getting to know people, our restaurants, drinking wine, I don't know. We, <laughs> I love that you just said that because it's funny because you're maybe, I don't know, the 10th person that we talked to in the last two years and the last two days and everybody mentions the idea of like sitting somewhere and having a glass of wine or a vermouth. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. and none of you have heard about the others, but you all say the same because it is just a catch-up of culture, right? That's how we are. We like to sit somewhere with our friends and have a drink. Of course. But again, I think we are a moment in a moment. So times difficult times we, we I think we, we all want to, to do that again so uh, even if we love it because we are Mediterranean and uh, we have this kind of uh, personality to, to sit around and walk around and talk and and get to know each other so I, I, um, I cannot I, I think that sitting around a table it's something that we I, it, it's in our unconscious so we learn to do that and we we love it so absolutely and i think yeah. we could not finish the day on a better note <laughs> so, yeah, of course of course so thank you so much mercedes and pilar uh thank you for taking us on a little tour of casa vicens so i'm very happy that we end on casa vicens which kind of closes the circle on gaudi today and also hospital de san Pau and modernism uh, so thank you so much for your time and for giving us this little tour of a garden. Thank you, and uh, we, we hope to see you very soon, by heart. Yes, likewise. Bye-bye, Mercedes. Bye-bye. Awesome. So I think this was a wonderful day. I have very much enjoyed going on a little tour of Catalonia and of Barcelona, particularly today, all of the UNESCO sites. I hope that you all have enjoyed our tours and all of whom have been pretty much private exclusive tours through the eyes of local catalan women who work in tourism and in those fantastic monuments in barcelona and i am going to finish the day just like i finished yesterday uh watching showing uh playing for you um the grand tour of catalonia video which is a road trip is the latest um idea initiative project by the catalan tourist board where you can follow an itinerary that covers all of catalonia in 14 days you collect stamps as you go along and then you can visit all of the most beautiful parts of the region from the pyrenees to the sea everything and all the monuments so 14 days all summarized in this nice little video uh, on the grand tour of barcelona and tomorrow i will see you back here again at 9 a.m new york 2 p.m in london 3 p.m. in Europe, 9 p.m. in Singapore for me to take you to Tarragona and Lleida, two of the other provinces of Catalonia. We will go from the coast of Costa Daurada, UNESCO city of Tarragona and the Pyrenees mountain to talk and see all sorts of adventure, tourism and activities that you can do in the Pyrenees of Catalonia. So I'm going to leave you with the grand tour of Catalonia video and I hope to see you all tomorrow. See you. Welcome to a land of short distances and long trails, within a few hours from the Mediterranean waves and the peaks of the Pyrenees, the rice of the Delta, the anchovies of La Scala, or the mountains of Prades, of the lush Monsen. Welcome to a small land to travel across, but great to discover made of water, wind, fire and snow, of age-old stones and landscapes to wonder, trails where time stops and so many other spots to discover, the pleasure of taking the longest path and sneak into a secondary road, look around you with fresh eyes, valleys, mountains, rivers and fields, bell towers and cellars, orchards and dry farms, Taste the most admired gastronomy, smell the colorful fruit trees. 
Admire a heritage cherished throughout centuries and traditions that cross generations. Welcome to a great adventure next to home. Welcome to a journey full of journeys. Welcome to the Grand Tour of Catalonia. <laughs>